Britain was born in Suffolk, in Lowestoft. Suffolk was always his home. And even when he emigrated temporarily to the United States, just before the Second World War, he somehow found himself ending up at a place on Long Island, which he felt was home, because it was called Southold, which was very like Southwold, just down the road in Suffolk. When he came back from America, he went back to Suffolk, to Snape, where he bought the old mill, and then he went to Alborough. Yehudi Menuhin once said that if wind and water could write music, it would sound like Ben's. There is something about the place of Albro. It's not just wind and water, it's actually the sound of the shingle being sucked back by the waves and thrown back again. Gloriana, of course, is not an opera about the sea, but I think there always is that awareness of, of nature and of the sort of the essence of finding music in the air. Elgar talked about this, about finding the music that was, that was in the air, that was in the wind. And Britain, I think, had the same instinct. In January this year, I had a voucher from the Landmark Trust. And my husband and I decided we'd like to go to Alborough. And there's a wonderful Martello Tower right at the end of the beach. And we rented that for a couple of days. It was snowing and it was really windy and it, the place was deserted. There were no tourists there at all because it was too cold. And we actually found it fascinating to be in the place that inspired Britain in this landscape. And you could sort of hear Peter Grimes just all around you. You could hear the music, you'd see where it all came from. So I spent many hours in the Martello Tower with the, the sea bashing against the walls, studying Gloriana and it was actually quite a moving thing to do. In Gloriana, you do hear these wonderful chords that, that do recur in, you know, in, in his operas. You hear little bits of Grimes, you hear little bits of Lucretia, the turn of the screw. There's a sort of musical language that he uses that is familiar, although in this particular case of Gloriana, it is then sort of enveloped in Elizabethan style music as well. Britain lived at Crag Cottage, which is right on the seafront. And indeed, you looked over the garden fence and there was the shingle of the beach. He used to dive out through the garden gate onto the beach and into the sea, bathing naked. This was his ideal, really, for um, seaside living. That's where he wrote Gloriana. Tea on the lawn had been something from since his childhood. I mean, there are photographs of him when he was at school or just after having his friends round for tea with Mrs. Britton sitting on the deck chair at the back and Mr. Britton, um, the dentist, sort of fast asleep in his deck chair. And it was very much the thing, you know, tea, um, it was all part of the sort of traditional English approach to food. Nursery food was what he liked. And I'm sure these sandwiches were sort of fish paste, Shippen's fish paste, I'm sure. <laughs> of course, living on the seafront in Aldborough had its problems. And in January 1953, there were the famous floods, which were very serious and caused a lot of damage, and a number of people were killed in, down the whole East Anglian coast. And Britain was uh, in the throes of writing his composition sketch. I mean, he's really a, quite a serious point in writing the opera, when his house gets completely flooded by the waves coming in. And they spend the week mopping up and clearing stuff out, and it's all completely sodden, and yet, a week later, he's completed the composition sketch and he's on his way. Storminess seems to be the watchword for this opera. The first night audience thought this was very improper for a new queen. The applause was somewhat grudging, made perhaps fainter by the fact that they, a lot of the people in the audience were wearing gloves because that was the thing you did in those days. And so the clapping was rather muted. But Britain did report that the Queen herself applauded for eight minutes and seemed to be very, um, very delighted and flattered, he said, by the occasion. 